So, we're sitting back, chilling, talking about old school internet software, Farhad. I yep. can't believe they want us to do this, but it's been like 10 years. And we're still here. Yeah. The university got this idea it needed a campus-wide information system and formed a committee to think about what they wanted. And I got stuck going to the meetings. Farhad didn't have to. He got to stay and work For a while. Stuff. For, For a while. while. And then I got to go to the meetings. And eventually, um, by about... February of 91, yeah, that's about right. They decided, okay, make um, a campus-wide information system, but actually the committee had a cool idea, which was it should be a little bit distributed. It shouldn't be one centralized system. So they had one design, but it didn't look codable, at least when I said Farhad. Why don't you code this up? I said, there's no way I can code that up. This is designed by crazy people. And so we ignored it for, oh, about six months. Yeah. Anyway, so kind of necessity is the mother of invention. Farhad came up with a pretty good protocol for doing distributed servers where you'd have a server that would have things on it, like directories or documents, and it would also have links, which would point to things sitting on other servers, which could be directories or documents. The only thing that was missing, and what I knew we couldn't sell back to that committee without, was any way to search. Happily, we had some Next machines around, and the Next machines came with this really cool digital librarian, which was basically a full-text search engine. So we glued in full-text searching in addition to the distributed pointers to different servers. And since we only had a couple Next machines, we kind of had to make it so that it indexed stuff on other servers because we couldn't afford to serve everything off the next box. I mean, I think we only had one cube at that point or two tops. That's right. So we had servers for everything and an index server on the next box that spoke the school for protocol. And we had clients for everything. Everything in those days being Unix boxes, DOS boxes. Um, Windows was just kind of peeking up over the horizon there. And of course, Macs. Yeah. And everything had to run over real low bandwidth links because, like, you were big time if your university had dial-up internet, dial-up IP, like via slip. Everything had to be squeezed down to go over low bandwidth links. What's really funny now for me is looking at these web-enabled phones. They look like gopher because about all you can do over a low bandwidth link with not much processing power on the client is menus and links to other stuff and lots of text and maybe a little bit of graphics. Let's make it so anybody could publish on the campus and maybe the two things we got really right at that juncture was the protocol was super simple so that anybody could write servers and clients. Yeah. And we understood that you got to have full text searching and that maybe the searching and indexing could happen on one box, but you were serving information off of other boxes. That made a big difference because it let people put stuff up, but they didn't have to do any work to make it searchable. And as was the spirit of the times, we just put it up for FTP and told the world. We didn't even tell the world. We just put it up on an FTP server and said, here's all this stuff. Anybody wants it can have it. And I guess somebody visited and told somebody else, and in a very short time, a couple of months, yeah. we were getting emails saying, how do I do this, and how do I do that, and here's bug fixes, and here's enhancements. So it's the open source story all over again. Yeah. When you made it so that people could link to things at other places, there's huge synergies. Like we put up Usenet recipes uh, in a searchable index, and everybody else who put up a gopher would have links back to that. They'd put up cool stuff, and it would look like we'd done extra work with getting more content when we had, hadn't. So the great thing about the internet was we could share some of the source and some of the software. We could also share information, and by making it seamless, I think it was pretty cool. Of course, this is all old hat now in, in web days and so on. Everyone thinks, well, of course you could do it. But we did it first. Yeah. Um. We invented cool things like um, bookmarks, saving your place somewhere in this mass of information. Again, a common enough uh, notion now that everybody knows about. Um, the full text searches, the ability to have different kinds of material that you could link to or obtain over the net. Home 
home page is our home gopher. That's another thing that I think you'll find in any distributed information system. You've got to have a way of at the client specifying where you want to start because there are many, many entry points. So the idea of a home page or a home gopher and the idea of bookmarks evolve because we kind of stumbled into, God, we've got to have this, but it shows up, I think, in every distributed information system. Sort Sooner of a later, latter it's day have portal, to isn't it? Yeah. Some one place where you go to or you can go to to, to start your travels. Um, second generation Gopher was after we'd gotten out there for a while and a bunch of other places were using it, we had to do a bump to the protocol and make it smarter. Um, specifically things that got added there was a whole bucket on the side of Gopher to hold meta information. We've been hanging out with the librarians enough that we got the idea that information about the content was a good thing to have. So with Gopher Plus you were able to find out things like who made this document, when was it modified. Uh, I think one of the cooler things that we did, the alternate views. So if you had a slow link you could get it in icky text. If you had a faster link you could get a higher bandwidth rendition of the same content. One of the best things that happened was something we didn't do at all. Steve Foster out of Nevada? Yes. Uh, did a global index of all of the gopher servers. He'd walk the whole gopher tree and build indexes of all of them. Uh, something that ended up being called Veronica. As I'm getting ready for doing this this talk, um, yesterday I said, man, I, I wish there was a Veronica server around still. I bet they're all gone. But I found one. <laughs> there is a guy at Point Loma, P-T-L-O-M-A dot E-D-U, gopher dot Point Loma, that's got a new Veronica that's uh, still walking the gopher tree and indexing it. It works, too. We provided a platform on which um, the next incarnation of um, World Wide Web, Mosaic, whatever, could build on, because when they started, they had no content. So their way up was to sit on top of Gopher, and all the web clients at that time, and still, knew about the Gopher protocol because it was so simple, and they could, they could use the content that we already had. So they started out with a huge chunk of content. Sort of the same thing we tried to do by building on top of FTP content or In ways. Ways content. Yeah. And this is good. This is another thing that I think is a recurring theme in all these kind of systems. You end up wanting to embrace and extend whatever was there before. What did we do wrong? What did we completely blow? What did we completely blow? Didn't have venture capital? <laughs> hey, there wasn't any venture capital. Oh. When we started out, there was like acceptable use policies. It was a question if you could even put ads and do commercial stuff That's on most right. of the internet. There was an acceptable use policy at that time, which was bizarre, considering now uh, cyber squatters are admired and the, the yeah. rule. We didn't have a real good place to put ads in our content because we were thinking much like we were librarians and you were using this as a structure to organize information. In fact, we were intentionally punting the whole page layout issue and saying that's something for other people to do. We were just programmers. We were just interested in the technical aspects. So We had a good time. That was the most important thing. Yeah. Okay, let's take the gopher out for a spin. Some of you guys aren't old school and haven't seen this before, or maybe you've forgotten. The um, home gopher, the one you start from, is where you go when you first launch. Uh, home gopher menu, also an option for starting from another gopher or using a URL, something we added after URLs came out and got popular. At the home gopher, or any other gopher, there's a bunch of items that are collections of documents or possibly search engines, like this guy. You also have the idea of a bookmark um, page, or a list of bookmarks. And at the top of my bookmarks, let's drag that window up where we can see it, is the uh, Veronica 2. So it's Veronica's back, and I can search for stuff like the thing I always searched for in demos, salmon, because I always found it. Here the server has given us back uh, 20 out of some large number of documents and I can open a document up and read all about salmon that some guy put together. Now 
It's also possible to get information about these items um, to select them and ask for any meta information available. And here, unfortunately, the guy's not running a Gopher Plus server. It's hard to get people to mark things up with meta information, but we had buckets for who owns it, when was it modified, and that sort of thing. Um, I've been playing actually a little bit of a trick here to slow things down enough. On new machines, things run pretty quickly, so to make it reasonably slow so it doesn't seem too confusing, we've been, at the same time, we're grabbing lists of documents and collections of stuff, including like videos or images. We also have been having another view of Gopher Space being rendered in another window that's a little bit buried, so let's bring him up. Late in the development life of Gopher at the University of Minnesota, we got the idea that collections of documents, since the collection information was abstracted from the document, could be mapped into a 3D scene, and you could have basically a virtual Gopher Space that you could drive around in and look at stuff. So I'm in the information about Gopher directory, but I could click at the uplink to one layer up and fly into a new scene. Uh, search Veronica 2, where I was before. The idea was that we would probably want to do something cute like let people say where documents belong in a 3D scene and let you, then let you drive around uh, real Gopher space instead of virtual Gopher space and now the machines are fast enough that it's quick on pretty much anything. Unfortunately, you've got to be a video game player to be really into this kind of stuff. But anyway, there's a taste of what Gopher is all about. Okay, we're out of here. Okay, now it's cutting time.